Hey guys, Kev here. I want to do first impressions on five knives real quick. Um, these were all loaned in to me by Backpack B. Big shout out to Brent over there. He also loaned in this knife. I don't even know what it's called. The Real Steel something. Um, I just don't... I, I'm not into this knife. I just didn't have enough interest to even really review it so i'm putting it over there um but i want to talk about these knives i have the artisan knives serious i plan on doing a full review on that guy i have the kaiser cormorant i have the real steel rocot i have the real steel phasma like budget version and i have at least i think it is a budget version maybe not and i have the Real Steel Luna Boost. I believe it's called the Luna Boost. This one, I could be wrong about the name. I haven't looked any of these up yet, but I wanted to knock these out. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. Let's just go in order of what I said, or I'll try to remember what I said. This is the Artisan Knives uh, Sirius, and this is a cool knife. It's a Ray Laconico design. Does it have Laconico somewhere? Here, we can zoom in, do the overview real quick, and we can look at that. So you have this green micarta with the fuller, which is very uh, Laconico-esque. You have T6 screws, which sucks. Looks like a little bit of rusting in there, in the screw. Um, oh, that would have been a better idea. There you go. There's that fuller. Here's your cutout, your lock bar access. You have the pivot with a little bit of a collar. This comes in a bunch of variations, G10 with copper pivot collar and ar rpm 9 this is s35 with my carta there's one with i think titanium there might be a carbon fiber it might be m390 it's a lot of different variants you have one thumb stud and then you have this s35 bn satin blade i love that artisan does a lot of satin um on this side you have the serial number 1849p and s35 bn there's that beautiful swedge again laconico he does such simple elegance. There's China right there. Got to let you know. And you have a titanium clip, which is not reversible, which kind of sucks. Uh, here is your liner lock. Inset liner lock lockup is very good right there. Very good. Here's the spine. And we have Artisan Cutlery R. Laconico lanyard post for y'all fools out there and that is an overview of that knife or deep close-up whatever you want to call it this one right here is a little off to the clip side i'd say on centering but very very close and what do i think of this so you have a thumb stud only for deployment or i should say right hand thumb stud only and then a front flipper it works excellent as a thumb stud for righties. Very strong, not very strong, very good detent. Strong as in good um, detent. I will say the lock bar access is kind of annoying. Trying to get your finger in that little hole. That's what he said. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't like it when they do that on knives. Just because I have, I don't even think I have a fat thumb. But like, I guess you could come at it without even going in there. Also what he said. But, I don't know. I just wish it was a little more cut out. I get it. It's for looks, but it's kind of dumb. Front flipper right-handed works excellent. Again, detent style. Jimping's excellent. Comes out pretty good. Left-handed, you can reverse flick it with that one thumb stud. And it is freaking beautiful, guys. What would you rather have? Riddle me this, people. Would you rather have the um, ability to reverse flick and front flip or thumb stud and front flip because i would much rather be able to do the reverse flick every time than do a thumb stud even though it is satisfying so for you guys who love that there you go you have it but i get a reverse flick and it's awesome and then the access left-handed is good too you just get in there you don't even have to worry about going through here you can but you just kind of go like that it works great and the front flipper works great i've gotten used to it since the unboxing ergonomics is where this knife is a little bit short for me uh comes up a little bit short it just doesn't it's just kind of boxy feeling 
It's almost like it's a little too long. Like, if they cut it here, then I feel like it would just feel more comfortable. I'm feeling all this down here against my palm. And I don't know. It's just not that comfortable. You could hold it pretty much anywhere. It's very neutral. I like that. But I don't know. It's fine. You know, it's good. It's just not excellent or anything. The jimping is basically useless. It's only for the front flipper anyway. Very clean up here. It feels good. And then... You have this very sharp S35BN blade, comes to a thin edge. They did an excellent job with this knife. I really like it. That is the Sirius. And we have the Cormorant from Kaiser. Um, this thing is ugly. Let's take a close-up look at this freaking gross beast. You have a reversible clip, which is cool. It does sit recess, and so do the screws, which is awesome. Um, you have these dumb X's on here in these lines. I don't get it. I'm sure there's a story, but I don't know why it's on a knife. You have G10, which is pretty cool. And then you have this white and black kind of contrast, which, you know, pretty cool. Pivot. And there's your button. I like that your button has a little bit of jimping on it, which is pretty cool. Here's your pivot. You have a front flipper, a hole, and a flipper. And um, we're going to get to that. Here's the other side, same ugliness on that side, spine. All right, let's flick it out. Take a look at this blade. It's S35VN steel. It is a flat grind, saber grind. Interesting blade shape, ugly as hell. Overall, this knife is just god awfully ugly. Um, and there is the spine. Can't really look at the lockup because it's a button lock. And a little bit of milling in there. And that is your overview, close-up look of the Cormorant. Now, my biggest issue with this knife is the non-existent detent. And when you have a hole, it needs to be that you can flick it with a little bit of resistance so that it's satisfying to reverse flick. Because what you end up with here is a knife that is actually pretty fun to use with the flipper. The way the flipper is above the pivot and everything, it just drags, and you're going to pretty much get it every time. You don't even need a detent on it, right? Front flipper, kind of the same thing, right? Sorry, it's hard to manipulate. There you go. Flies around, and you're good to go. Thumb, kind of the same thing. You're just pushing forward, giving it enough gas, and it's flying out. But the reverse flick, you just have to have a little bit of Build up pressure. Yes, I can sit here and routinely get it. That's not the problem. But it's not satisfying. I feel like I'm just like lazily flicking it out. And it's just not satisfying in any way. And that bugs me because this knife... Oh, this knife could be so much better. And I know that a lot of people love this knife. But I just think it could be even that much better if they had just maybe strengthened that spring up or however you do it and made this a little bit stronger. Because it wouldn't have affected any of these other ones. It honestly wouldn't have affected any of the other deployment methods. And it just would have made that one better. Um, so overall, it's ugly as sin. And the detent stinks. The detent, it's not really a detent. Um, but it has a lot of fidget factor and I see why people are really interested in this because it's sort of a budget fidget monster, right? And they don't care how ugly the knife is. I put this in the category with like the Kaiser horn. Like it just has a lot of fidget to it. It's kind of fun. Um, it's, it's actually relatively ergonomic. If you choke up into this choil, it works. I hate knives that put me up on a big kind of like thumb spot like this you know i don't know you get a little poon spoon there but uh, i just don't like ramps like this it reminds me of the tucson stingray 129 and the uh 305 where you're kind of forced into this and then you kind of go up here and it's awkward i don't know but ergonomically it works pretty well um and yeah it's a decent knife it's just not as good as people are like clamoring over it for uh, but it could be so if they just cleaned it up, got rid of all this goofy shit, put a decent detent on it, I think it would be a winner for me, right? A lot of people already think it is. So that's the Cormorant. This is the Real Steel Rokot. 
Um, and again, guys, big shout out to Backpack B for loaning these in to me. Um, go check out his channel, please. He is making some amazing content. Look at that floating backspace there. Let's take a close up look at this bad boy. So you got natural micarta. I don't know if this is the knife nuts version, but it might be. They had sort of like an exclusive, awesome looking pivot. These are my first real steel knives that I've checked out, and I'm pretty impressed with the build quality and everything. Here's your jimping, thumb studs, perfect centering. Look at that backspacer. The, the clip flips, it goes into slots, and then you tie it down, or you screw it down there, kind of like the towel. And it just kind of floats there. Obviously, it connects where these uh, screws are. And let's open it up. You got your owl. No, it's a dog, idiot. Uh, S6, X69, N690. Jesus, Kev. It's N690, which I absolutely hate. You can see the detent ball track is kind of exposed right there. Some people hate that. I don't mind. There's a fuller with what looks like a little bit of rust in it already because N690 sucks, even though people say it's very highly rust proof. I don't think so. Nice satin grind on here. Yeah, you can really see that. I don't know if it's from when it got here or it was already rusted when I got it. I have indeed bragging its design. It's just sat in my knife case for two days. I got it two days ago, maybe even yesterday. Um, so there's a look at that cool show side pivot, or I guess that's the lock side, but it, it's clean on this side. There's your lock up. And... Are there lightning pockets? Can't really see in there, can we? Yep, there's some lightning pockets in there. So that's a look at the row cut. Uh, one big thing that screams at me right away is the access to the lock bar sucks. So like you just, I don't know, you're just forced to kind of shove your finger in there. There's no path. There's no cutout to really like get in there. There's no jimping. You're just hoping you catch that is essentially what happens um the front flipper once i got used to it is great bang it out i have not slipped off and like stabbed myself on this that does happen with front flippers sometimes have not had that issue with this knife as of yet and this is left-handed works great liner locks are always better when it comes to front flippers in my opinion uh, then you have these studs which are a little bit sharp but the D10 is so light that it doesn't really matter, but it's not light enough that it like causes an issue. Like the way they line these studs up close to the scale and everything, it fires out of there when you fire it. It doesn't even really need a detent, so it works. And that means they can dial it to drop shut like that. The reverse flick left-handed works excellent. Um, yeah, if this was my knife, I would probably love it. And I would have it modded to just get a little better access to this lock bar. And it would literally be an amazing knife. It's a really, really cool knife. Definitely see why everybody's loving this thing. Clip, I will say, pretty tight. Um, this one I have not been able to put in pocket yet. So let me see. Oh, no. It works great. So it just kind of pops and slides in. I don't know. They, they did a good job with that. Um, ergonomically, I'm loving it. Absolutely loving this. Just it's neutral yet ergonomic. It's not like too neutral to where like it feels kind of like the serious is almost too neutral where that down here, like bothers me. I know this is weird, but like, I feel that down there somewhere. It just kind of bothers me that that much is hanging out on this knife. Doesn't bother me at all. Super weird. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I'm really digging the Rokot. And then we have the Real Steel Phasma. Pretty sure here it's the Phasma. And this is something that uh, Backpack B adds to his knives. He adds these re uh, removable thumb discs. And I'm 90% sure he added this. And it didn't come with it. Like, this one came with the knife. Right? It all matches and everything. It makes sense to me. This one, I think he bought and added, but I could be wrong. Um, and that actually makes the knife, like, usable. Right? Um, 
Because I believe this knife comes without that, and then you just have this fuller. And you're essentially two-handing this knife, because you can't get in there to flick it. Can I, can I do it right-handed? I mean, I could probably teach myself to maybe flick it, but it would not be enjoyable. With this thing on it, it's freaking awesome. I did not like this knife out of the box, but man, am I liking it now. And I know they make a thumb stud premium version of this, I'm pretty sure, in M390 and titanium. I think this might be steel. Could be wrong, but it's fairly heavy for titanium. But I don't know. For a knife on washers, pretty sure it's on washers. It's very smooth. So it could be bearings, but... You know what? I think it might be bearings. It's hard for me to tell. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to stick with washers, but it could be bearings, so don't hold me to that. Um, yeah, he really made this knife usable with this removable thumb stud. So if you have one of these, I highly, highly recommend this removable thumb stud because now it's actually like a good knife. And the action's pretty good uh, on the clothes there. Again, pretty sure it's on washers, but it drops, shake. Um, and it's very comfortable in hand. I really like the feel of this knife. It's thin, slim, yet it has a nice thin A. Look at that taper on the blade. Goes out to a beautiful tip. Comes down to a good edge. This is D2, which you guys know I hate D2, but at least they didn't bead blast it. Um... Yeah, it's a lot. It's a um, frame lock, but because of the light detent. Sorry. Well, there. Because of the light detent, it doesn't really matter left handed. You can flick it. It's awesome. It really is. And I enjoy the aesthetics of the two uh, see throughs. Let's take a quick close up look. There's your see through. And I love how it matches the pivot. That's just awesome to me. There's the finish on the steel slash titanium. I'm pretty sure it's steel, but I could be wrong. Very, very cool. A little bit of pop of color right there. Here's your deep carry clip off to the side, but it's recessed with recessed screws. Retention, excellent. Just, you know, you got a little bit of a flathead here to, to take it apart. I mean, I don't know. I just... I hated it when I unboxed it. I won't lie. And I have come and grown to really like it. Uh, we take a look at the spine. Take a look at the lockup. Very good. There's that rust on it. It's probably just dirt. See all the schmutz in there. There's your detent. And yeah, I don't know. I just, I've enjoyed it. I like the access to the lock bar. They cut this out right here. And look at that. You have that little chamfer in there. And it just is beautiful to get your thumb in. No freaking pressure required. Just really disengages right away. Um, no stick of any kind. It's beautiful. Beautiful disengagement. Beautiful actuation. Man, this removable thumb stud just changes this knife for the better. So that's a cool one. That's the Phasma. Then we have what I'm pretty sure is the Luna Boost or something like that, or Turbo. Um, and this is like a really small little guy and not really my bag, so to speak. You have a one-sided clip. At least I'm pretty sure. Yep. See, there's a little slot up here and there's not on this side. Um, it is titanium, pretty sure, because it's light, and you have that little thumb study thing. Um, again, could be washers, could be bearings. It's not relatively smooth. Um, it's tight, so it's not, you know, flying out of there. Detent's very light, again. You know, that's me flicking a little bit. <laughs> um... Yeah, I love this pivot design on this guy. It's just really cool. How it, it's actually like concaved or whatever in there. Um, there's your hardware. It all matches this kind of 
gold bronze look. If you give it the gas, it does shoot out of there. I mean, okay, pardon me. You just got to give it the thunk. Left-handed, it's actually better because I'm putting pressure on this detent ball. I'm making the detent stronger, and then when it pops, it really flies out. Whereas if I do it right-handed, <laughs> like I'm going to try to flick it. Ah, got it. So it's just a lot easier left-handed because you don't have to worry about the weak detent. Let's zoom in. Here's the scale. I mean, it's a cool looking knife for sure. Lanyard pin or lanyard slot for you guys. Um, nice kind of PVD dark wash blade or whatever. There is a fuller. Um, and then they added this stud. I think possibly this was a slip joint before. So this one is in probably my favorite steel N690. Yep. There's a two. I don't know if this is number two of something. That's pretty cool. Um, your lockup is good. Actually, it seems pretty late. Eh, it's all right. It's a very thin knife, right? Definitely has some lightning pockets because it feels super light. And that clip is pretty cool how small it is. Good retention and everything. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty sure this is a slip joint to start with. And then they call it the booster, the turbo, because they added this thumb stud. That's my theory on this. So it used to be that you would just, I guess, grab here like this. It's kind of like a nail Nicky Fuller thing. And pull it out. And they added that, so now it has the ability to be flicked, right? So it's basically like taking it from a European design to an American market design by adding the ability to flick, right? That's my theory. Um, it actually fits really good in my hand. And for being such a small knife, I really f like the Ergos a lot. Um, it does have a really thin blade, slicey edge. So, I mean, it feels super thin. So for a knife, this is probably a really good little... You like backup knife or something. So I could see why Backpack B would like it. Um, just not as like a primary knife. And not really as like a fidgety type knife. But, you know, knives have different purposes. And not all of them are for me, right? I've learned that. So that's the Real Steel Luna Turbo Boost, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and that's a quick look at five knives. Luna Turbo or whatever. Rokot. Phasma pimped out by Backpack B, Cormorant, and the Sirius from Artisan, and then I kind of showed this thing I don't know the name of that I just, I just don't like it, it's like on washers I'm pretty sure, and it has a shit detent, barely locks up, steel liners, absolutely no action, it's just, this has no redeeming quality to I me, mean, it's heavy as fuck. Um, these all have some kind of redeeming quality. You know what I mean? This is a cool knife. That's a really cool knife. That could be a really awesome knife. This is awesome with the thumb stud thing on it. And this is a cool little backup knife. That I have no desire to care about. So that's just my take on it. I'll probably do full reviews on some of these. I may just do rapid reviews on them. I may not because, you know what? I just spent 25 minutes on this. So I may just do the Sirius and the Rokot and call it a day on these other four. If they come out with a better version of this, I'm going to be on it. Um, this one I'm intrigued by, man. I don't know what it is. There's just something that I really like about this. And I kind of want to try the premium thumb stud Phasma now. Uh, I am, yeah, I'm kind of interested in that. This, you know, eh, I could never see this again in my life and I wouldn't care, but I get it. And this is trash in my opinion. So there you go, guys. I love you all. Go check out Backpack B. Please go check out Backpack B. Link is below. If you guys want t-shirts, I have the Detent Collection is now set up on Teespring. T-shirts, hoodies, women's tank tops pillows and i even threw in 
a pint glass with the Detent Diva logo on it. All the other stuff is got Detent. Um, if you guys are interested, you can go buy the shirt right on the Teespring. Link below. Patreon link below if you want to join that. Really would appreciate that, of course. I, I think I'm setting up the members here on YouTube, too, if anybody's interested. And then, of course, all my affiliate links are down there if you guys want to pick anything up. I only recommend stuff that I actually like myself, so you can shop safely wherever that is. Obviously, I can't tell you what knife to buy at White Mountain, but, um, you know, you can always watch my review on whatever you're thinking about picking up. Hit me up in the comments if you have questions, if you want to tell me I'm a shithead. Um, you know, whatever you want to do, guys, I love you. I appreciate all the support. I appreciate everything. You guys are the shit. You are the shit. And I will catch you later.